we've had a long and interesting history with products branded H500. There was the original H500P, then our Mesh Mod, then the Disappointment PC build, and the H500P Mesh, and most recently, the H500M. Over the last year, Cooler Master has completely turned around its H500P into an excellent product in the H500P Mesh, and furthered that development with the H500M. We're now looking at the opposite end of the price scale, with the company's new H500, no suffix letter on that, just straight H500, priced at $100 and borrowing many of the improvements made on its more expensive counterparts. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut liquid metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. The look of the H500 family was firmly established by the H500P over the past year, actually, and that followed the same trend of moving to 200 milliliter fans that we saw in old, old Cooler Master cases like the 912, the Half X, and so forth, where they tried to adopt larger and larger fans which is a, a fad that sort of died for a while, and it came back with the H500P, and that's where we are today. The H500 sticks with the 200 millimeter fans in the front, it's got a 120 in the back, and in terms of the exterior of the case, it's actually a good bit different from the other H500 series cases. So the first thing you'll notice is the front top now has sort of the bump that the old 912, the 922, 932, that those cases had, Back then, when that was new, Cooler Master had advertised this section of the case as, quote, a top platform for personal belongings. But now they've actually made more use of it. So that's it's kind of a funny thing to say. I mean, you could just make it literally flat if that's what you wanted. But for this one, they've made it a bit more functional. So while it is a top platform for personal belongings, you could also use it as a literal handle. So it is actually functional. It's not the sturdiest handle in the world. It's not metal, but it doesn't seem like it's going to fall off with a reasonable weight PC inside of it. So uh, overall, the case is another H500 series case. It takes the same kind of airflow idea and layout of H500P mesh. It does ship with an acrylic front panel as an alternative to this mesh one if you wanted to go back to the OG H500P look with an acrylic front panel uh, suffocating the two 200 millimeter fans. There's still some issues with the fans kind of jutting out kind of far, and if you want to pull air in through this side ventilation, you're really going to struggle, as you'll see in our thermal testing. But Cooler Master ships now stock with the mesh installed, which is great. You'll see that it performs pretty well with mesh, actually. There's really not much to complain about with it. Other changes include the power supply shroud. So this is pretty interesting. The PSU shroud now uses a single thumb screw to hold in and socket. Uh, so it's, it's not difficult to remove, and it also doesn't wobble around. So they've done well with that. Just kind of socket into the place with one thumb screw. It's only a half shroud now. So the half length shroud means that fortunately, there are actually some further airflow benefits to the GPU. Power supply shrouds are actually pretty bad for GPU airflow overall. Normally you can deal with it with just really directional fans, but uh, cutting it in half means that some more of this air gets finds its way up into the video card cooler just from natural pressure of the video card pool cooler pulling air around its axial fans. So overall, a couple of small design changes versus the existing H500 series that make a pretty big impact on the cooling and also just on the look externally. Uh, changes for the panel, so it's only one tempered glass panel, it's a $100 case. This is the main feature of it, is that it's half the price of the H500M, it's 50 bucks cheaper than the H500P mesh, but it takes the same basic ideas that the H500P mesh has and cuts out a couple of the extra features. So some of the extra paneling on the back that we've always complained about is no longer there, and uh, that's fine, because it was just kind of wasted money in a lot of instances anyway, we felt like, and bringing the price down is more important in this class anyway. The panel still has, this side panel still has the flathead screws, which we've never liked. There are way better ways to do this, like a, a thumb screw, but they have two of them now, so I'm not sure that's better or worse. However, it does hook in at the bottom. So the panel, when you loosen these, remove them, it'll just kind of hang there hooked in now, which is great. 
So overall, pretty good improvements. Let me go through Patrick's build notes for this. He spent a lot of time assembling, disassembling it, and then I'll talk through our testing results for thermals and noise, if you're curious about how this one performed. So speaking again to that optional acrylic panel, let's say you did want to install it for some reason. The stock case is fitted with a big rectangle of mesh, similar to the one we praised in the H500P mesh, which can be swapped out by removing eight screws. No adhesive this time, so that's good. We don't recommend removing it and putting the acrylic panel in, but having choice comes out as a net positive. This is finally a way for Cooler Master to have their cake and eat it too, and also push their modularity focus that they've tried with other cases. And this is also without releasing two different product SKUs or selling alternate front panels separately. Taking the front panel off to clean and swap the filter out of the mesh isn't too easy, like the original H500P, or too hard, like practically every other case. There are four plastic tabs holding it on, nothing fancy, and it's tight enough that it won't fall off when picked up, like one of the other cases. The top panel isn't removable at all because it's part of the chassis, and there are no fan cages this time around, but since the fan screws are directly accessible from the outside of the case, it's unnecessary. It's invisible when the case is assembled, but other H500X cases have a little mesh apron covering, and that's at the bottom under the intake for the front panel. It's fragile, it makes them sort of painful to pick up if you grab them in the wrong place, and it always felt like a design afterthought. In the H500, the mesh is built into the front panel instead, and this is an extremely minor feature, but it's an indication that Cooler Master's engineers are really working on small improvements, even ones that aren't externally visible. There is a vertical GPU mount, and we'd normally test this and write a short segment in the thermal section about how mounting air-cooled GPUs flush with the side panel is a bad idea. Cooler Master saved us time by making the vertical mount single slot, so liquid-cooled cards are practically the only thing that will even fit. Like the interchangeable front panel, that's a clever move. It adds value to the case, and we can't complain about how bad it is for air-cooled cards because they don't fit. So the solution, it seems, is to force people to use open-loop cooling, and that's fine. The launch of the H500P had a finicky shroud that needed to be removed in order to install the power supply, and that's been improved in subsequent revisions. The H500 is one of the best so far, and it's probably the cheapest as well. It's made of a plastic rather than steel, only covers half of the bottom of the case, which is great. Heat isn't trapped from the hard drive cage, and air from the intake fans isn't stolen by the shroud. But it's still long enough to hide power supply cables and not difficult to get in and out, although you do need to remove it to get the power supply in. The whole thing slides out with removal of a single thumb screw, and then it's just socketed in. Cable management clearance is good behind the motherboard, and it needs to be because the limited room in the half shroud. There are tie points and cutouts absolutely everywhere, and the cable management bar is as good as it has been on the other models. Cooler Master has omitted the plastic cover for the CPU socket and the steel cable cover thing this time around as well, and that's another good call, especially if it's helped lower costs. Side by side, comparison reveals various other tweaks that make it seem like Cooler Master took a step back, considered what was really necessary, and then stripped the rest out. We approve of this approach. The tempered glass side panel has a big metal lip at the bottom that helps it from falling out, and we like the use of screws instead of a latch that the other H500X cases, although we still don't like the sort of coin-sized or flathead-sized driver end that they require. Thermal testing is pretty simple this time around, so as always, full article in the description below if you want to read it instead, but we have our test methodology in there. I'll leave it to the article. Click on that if you want to learn more. Thermal testing, so we kind of limited what we're doing here. We've tested so many H500Ks at this point, not just from Cooler Master either. Other companies have their own H500s like NZXT. So we have at least eight videos and articles, if not more now, about thermals of H500X, insert suffix, case. And if you want a whole lot of detail, go check those out. But we're just going to go through the most important stuff for the new H500 rather than focus like 20 minutes of discussion on it because it's been done before a whole lot. And although there are changes here, we can go over them pretty quickly. So let's do that. This first CPU torture chart just shows a couple of previous Cooler Master H500 series cases. We'll expand in a moment. For the new H500, CPU DT was 49.9 degrees over ambient during the torture test, which jumped up to 56.9 degrees Celsius DT with the acrylic panel instead. We've driven this point into the ground over the past reviews, but the unventilated front panel forces 200 millimeter fans to draw air in at a 90 degree angle from the sides, which reduces pressure as the air makes a 90 degree turn, or multiple of them. 
Large, slow-moving fans also tend to have low static pressure. Putting mesh rather than acrylic in front of the fans allows them to reach mostly their full potential. We have other H500s on here, all isolated for easy comparison. So for example, we can see that 49.9 CDT is a bit warmer than its fellow H500M at 45.6 or H500P mesh at 48.2, but still among the top performers on our next chart. Moving on to comparative data with other cases, stock temperatures are certainly cooler than the original H500P, but the acrylic panel made it 56.9 degrees over ambient. The case is performing reasonably well overall for CPU thermals and is comparable to other top quarter performers in our testing. Given the reduced price point of $100, the nearby performance to the H500P mesh, which we recommended, this is all appreciated. GPU DT averaged 48.5 degrees Celsius during torture testing. This increased even more than CPU DT did with the acrylic panel, up to 57.9 degrees, with less air coming in the front. Airflow could be biased towards the exhaust fan behind the CPU, leaving a dead zone at the bottom of the case. 48.5C for the H500 is the best GPU temperature for an H500X case so far, probably because of the half shroud. Even though there is an HDD cage directly in front of the bottom intake, it's still less of an obstruction than a full power supply shroud, which blocks or steals a significant portion of the incoming air at the bottom of the case. That puts the H500's GPU cooling on the same level as some of our top performing cases we've tested, like the PM01 and RV02. Obviously, using the acrylic panel ruins that, putting it closer to the 805 Infinity. The 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme test resulted in an average GPU DT of 49.3 degrees Celsius, slower than anything else on the chart except for the half X, which had a side intake fan pointed directly at the GPU. GPU temperatures are the main performance advantage that H500 has over the H500M and H500B mesh which are fairly similar except for the power supply shroud. Moving on to Blender. Rendering on the CPU put the average CPU DT at 35.7 degrees Celsius over ambient, cooler than most of the other cases on the chart, and just about equal to the H500B mesh and the open air Cougar Conquer. GPU rendering only raised GPU DT to 24.3 degrees Celsius, also one of the lowest temperatures on the chart, and again, similar to the Cougar Conquer. It beats the H500M and H500P mesh here. With and without mesh, the H500 for noise falls exactly where it should on the chart. 40.9 dBA with the mesh front is on par with the H500M and H500P mesh, while 39.3 dBA is right between the H500P and H500M with a glass front panel. All the H500X cases we've tested fall in a fairly na narrow DBA range towards the upper end of our scale. We poked some fun at it a little earlier, but naming the case the H500 will actually prove smart further down the line. We made such a fuss over the H500P largely because Cooler Master compared it to the half. I mean, the review documents literally said guaranteed high volume airflow or something like that. But the branding now calling this new case H500 without a suffix implies that this is the base model and that the H500 is closer in looks and cost to a classic mid-range half case, as you can see here, than the H500P or H500P Mesh or H500M have been. So MSRP for the H500 at 100 bucks, $50 less than the Mesh version, stripping out a bunch of stuff that we never particularly found useful or desirable. Uh, it's a good price point. Thermals are good, price is good. Cooler Master includes two options for the front panel if you really want them, though we like the stock one. It's hard to imagine being too dissatisfied with this case unless you take issue with the appearance, which is fair. That's subjective. If you don't like how it looks, plenty of other cases out there, like the H500, if you're stuck to that name, from NZXT. So you can even have a case with the same name if you wanted it with different looks. But the point is, we don't have any issues with this one. In fact, if, you're, if you've been looking at the H500P mesh and you really liked it, but you just couldn't imagine stretching to 150 bucks for a case, then this is a pretty damn good alternative at $50 cheaper. It's a, a bit smaller in some ways. There's less plastic, which actually I prefer personally. Fewer metal parts in sort of the back end of the case also something we prefer. So really, other than the color difference and some looks differences, there's not a lot that you could dislike about the H500 blank. No, no suffix on it. Feels weird to say that. So uh, that's it for this one. Pretty straightforward. We don't have a ton of problems with it. So great job, Cooler Master and team. Uh, good price point on this one. 
this is why product segmentation works out sometimes because by being able to use some of the same tooling or at least some of the same branding or naming or whatever, companies can reduce overhead overall, make a cheaper product, you end up with something like this. So uh, better than the original H500P and comparable to the H500P Mesh, which we liked. As always, the link's in the description below if you're interested in this case or our review of it in written format. You can go to store.gamersnaxis.net to pre-order our new shiny GN shirt. This is limited edition. Once they're sold out, that's it. They're gone. We're not going to make more. So get your order in. We're figuring out sizes and everything for everyone right now. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnaxis. It helps out directly there in smaller quantities if you prefer. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.